Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Fish Room Vlog number 11. I think we're at number 11, it's been a while since I've done one of these. So hey everybody, welcome back, and welcome back to Fish Room Vlog. I haven't done one of these in a while, just because there guys haven't really been tons to update you guys on, I just didn't really feel like making them, but... You know, guess what? We are back and we're ready to do another one. We got some new fish, or a new fish for this tank. We have to do a small water change on the 36. We'll check in with everybody around here. Well, not everybody, because I'm reserving that for a different video. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of check in at certain tanks around the fish room. Um, just kind of give you guys a quick update on everything going on over here. Um, I definitely want to give you guys an update on the shell dwellers, because I literally have not shown them in like any videos recently for some reason. I don't know why, probably because it's hard to get good video of them. But yeah, so let's get right into the main points of the video. Sorry about this mess right here. This is sort of just my messy corner right now. But yeah, so let's get right into it. First things first, we've got uh, the 36 gallon tank and this mulm right here, or just sort of detritus and gunk. So last time I did a water change on this tank, which was probably like, I don't know, like three days ago, which was like really recently. So I don't need to do a water change. I've started only doing one water change a week on every tank. Sa Saturday is my water change day. Every Saturday, water change, every single tank gets about 50 to 40% water change. And uh, that's just kind of how I do it. I haven't ever filmed that day just because it's, uh, it's way better. Just it goes a lot faster if I don't film it, but maybe one day I will. But yeah, so when I did that, I cranked up the flow on this uh, hang on back filter because it is adjustable. I usually keep it kind of low so it doesn't do the splashing noise because water evaporates really quick out of this tank, uh, which is a bit annoying. But um, again, I can't get a lid on this tank just because of its shape and the way I had the light situated, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so I had that cranked up and it was pushing all of the detritus that was kind of stuck in between the plants and underneath the wood. Completely natural. If you have fish in any tank, there's going to be detritus and it sort of pushed it all around to the lowest flow area of the tank, which is this corner. So it just sort of all built up here. Uh, the mulm's good for the system. Uh, the plants really like it. You can see there's some by the roots here. Plants really like it, good for your plants or whatever. But guess what? I don't. Um, so I'm going to... There's a, there's a coolie loach right there. Check that out. He's just sort of hanging out in the mulm. Yeah, but uh, we definitely need to uh, get this all out of here. It just... I don't like it. It's unsightly. The plants don't mind it, but I'd rather... Uh, just not have it in the tank so let's get into doing a small water change not gonna do a full water change just gonna clean the glass and siphon out this mulm and i'll show you how i do that so typically when i'm doing a water change on this tank i'll take my big hose right here and drain it out the window as a lot of people have already known uh, if you watched the channel before but when i'm doing like a little water change what i do is i come down here and I use this little hose. It's a much smaller diameter, but it's not like an airline tubing. It's a little bit thicker than airline tubing so that it doesn't get clogged up as easily. I grab my bucket and my little clamp from my messy corner of the fish room, get the hose in the bucket, and then use your clamp to just clamp it into the inside of the bucket so that this doesn't come out and I don't have to always be holding this into the little bucket. And then I just climb up here on my chair, dip this end of the hose into the water, get the suction going, and then bring it down to the bottom and just start siphoning out the mold. And so this is something that I do literally every water change. Before I break out the bigger hose, I just take this guy and just siphon out all this other just mold at the bottom. And if I had uh, gravel in this tank, I just don't really like the look of gravel. And I don't think it grows plants just as well, doesn't anchor them in super well. Um, all this mold will just kind of get trapped in between the grains and sort of sink to the bottom and uh, plants would use it but it would also sort of eventually build up too much and that can be bad for your system so with sand it just can't really seep through it so it just sort of piles up on the top makes it easy to pull out and um, I always have just been a big advocate of pulling this stuff out of your tank even though theoretically you could just leave it in there and you probably wouldn't have any issues I just don't really like the look of it and my plants get nutrients from the substrate and any water column fertilizers i put in there so i don't think it's a big issue when it comes to that but and if you have any fish in a tank you're gonna get mulm even if you don't have fish in the tank uh, you're gonna get mulm just it's just dead plant matter fish poop and just stuff like that builds up looks unsightly um it'll cloud your water if you ever stir up the substrate if a fish throws up the substrate it's just good to get this stuff out of there every once in a while. Every time you weekly water change, just siphon out what you can see. It helps keep it from building up and keeps your tank looking good. Mm -hmm. 
And just like that, we've got a tank that's drained a little bit and a bucket full of mulmy water. So this is perfect for watering house plants or whatever like that. So I'm not gonna completely dump all this stuff out. I've got a couple plants I could water with this. So yeah, we got this, I'm just gonna dump this out. I'm gonna clean the glass, just gonna use a paper towel because this is just really simple diatom algae on the front. And then uh, pretty much fill it back up and that's all. Really simple, quick maintenance session today. Nothing big, nothing crazy. Alright, there we go. Tank is clean, looking a million times better. Um, some people might have noticed uh, already, I saw it, there's a little crinum in the back there. I got a really good deal on that, got it for like $5, which is a great deal for a crinum. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how it goes, because my background plants are a little lackluster. Amazon Swords are doing well, though. But yeah, before we get into anything else, time to uh, do some fertilization today. One squirt, Easy Green Daily. Not sponsored, but you know, come on, Corey, help me out here. I'll say anything you want me to. But yeah, three squirts in this tank. Uh, pretty much just one squirt per 10 gallons. So I've got a lot of 10 gallon estimated tanks. So I just sort of give them all little squirts. This, these tanks only need them, but you know, I just sort of throw them in there just because. Love Easy Green. It's kind of my standard go-to liquid fruit. I don't always dose it every day. I should be, but you know, I also have this H2O plants vital. Um, I haven't used this for a while, I don't know why. I just sort of got the Easy Green and the started using that. But I've got this pretty much a full bottle, so I'll use that. But, I mean, it works. I don't use a ton of it, but it works. Tank's looking clean. Got the banana plant trimmed back. Try and get these big leaves. Like, look how big these leaves are getting. I didn't think banana plants would be this easy to grow. Red Tiger Lotus is looking really nice. Getting a little crowded out by this Rotala, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, nothing crazy in here. Check out, we got our Nerite snails. Our horn Nerites, we got one here. One here, both are still doing good. All those Sope Tetras. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to get more fish for this tank. Uh, that needs to come. Uh, some other fish in here. I'd like to turn this into sort of a community. But for now, just the Sopes. Let's give them a little food while we're over here. Say hi, Chris. There's our new beta. No name for him yet, so if anybody wants to suggest something, someone suggested mustache, because he's got that little blue mustache. It's kind of a cool name, but yeah. Just gonna give him a little pinch. Not a ton of food, because I feed them a couple times a day sometimes. Yeah, 20 gallon long, sort of community, just sort of centerpiece and then dither fish. I maybe would like to get some corridors for there. I don't know, maybe, but yeah, these guys, just give them a pinch of flake. Everybody sort of eats the same flake and I'll vary it up with frozen food. So yeah, just hang out. There's our rubber lip out in front. He's the least skittish pleco I've ever had. <laughs> he doesn't even care whether or not today or night, he's just all over the tank all the time. My clown pleco in here, I hardly ever see unless it's nighttime and I uh, sneak up on them. You know, and actually let's feed the shell dwellers because I told you guys I'd give you guys a look at them. So here they are, my Neolamprologus multifasciatus, hanging out right here. Got a little group of four in here. I'd like to get more, but they are pretty pricey, especially with shipping. So let's see if I can get this done right here. Just gonna move this lid off to the side a bit. They are pretty skittish still. Um, they're definitely shy fish. They know that in their natural habitat, they'd be the smallest fish in the lake. So they're definitely naturally pretty skittish. So let me step back, let them come out and eat. So yeah, they just eat flake food and frozen food and haven't had any issues with that. If I wanted to get them breeding, I'd probably have to work on a different diet for them. But for now, they're just eating flake and frozen and it's totally fine for them. I'll feed all these other guys later off camera. I don't need to turn this into a feeding video. But yeah, let's go check out that new fish. All right, so here we are, everybody. This is our fish. This is a Stiphodon goby, rainbow goby. Um, let's see if I can find him. So yeah, we had one. Yeah, you see him right there. Pretty skittish. We had one, put him in the 36. He promptly jumped out the night we first got him uh, because he uh, was pretty skittish, and I didn't know that they were jumpers. So now I'm going to put him in this jungle tank, which has a lid, this guy right here has a lid and he shouldn't be able to fly out in his first night so that he can get more accustomed to the tank and it's definitely a good setup for him plenty of space and kind of diatoms for him to graze on and i think he'd make a nice addition lots of cover for him so i'm just gonna pull him out of this bag this is a breather bag which uh is a nice thing to have because it keeps them from sloshing around when you're taking them home but dang this thing is tied really tight all right so i picked this guy up from petco last time um 
and this time just because they do have that policy of like 30 days guaranteed which is a nice thing about the chain stores you can get a new fish or your money back if you don't have success and i think that's a nice thing so just gonna get them in here because you cannot float acclimate uh breather bags uh, something with the way that the you know oxygen co2 dispersion thing works you can't float them so we're gonna drip acclimate him so we've got him in this little container he's obviously pretty washed out he's probably pretty much invisible being seen right there so i'm just gonna set him right here and get our drip acclimation system going if you guys watch the new better video then you'll know how this system works just my little handy dandy drip system works really well makes acclimating fish easy just gonna get the siphon going try to open up this valve a bit more and then tighten it up just so that it's dripping at sort of slow rate you can see how it just drip 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 and then that will acclimate him slowly over the course of however long we're probably gonna wait most likely we'll wait about 30 minutes or so for this guy to acclimate so as you guys can probably see just airline air control valve leading into here just slow drips this guy's super stressed out from being in uh, the bag for a while so i'm just gonna let him kind of chill out for 30 minutes or so drain the water level once it gets too high and just let him sort of just kind of hang out in here until he's ready to be added to his new home all right everybody well it is the next day and i would love to show you guys uh the fish but for the life of me i cannot find him well i mean i can find him but i just cannot get him on video combination of this curved front of this fluval flex and the fact that he's on the bottom and way in the back kind of hiding away makes it very difficult for me to show him to you but you know at the end of the day that's how it is here um just especially with a fish like this that's pretty reclusive and from what i can tell pretty intelligent he knows uh, like, you know, how to keep away from people. I've found that they can see pretty far outside the tank, especially my grandma's uh, stifed on Gobi. He can see you across the room, and if he's trying to get close to Tangle, he's out. He's booking it. So I probably won't likely get good footage of him for a while, but if I do, I'll throw it in any video. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know, go in and just like, try to get him in the front. You know, this is just a fishing vlog. I'm not going to do a bunch of crazy editing or whatever like that. But, yeah, so there's that uh thanks for watching everybody before we're done um i actually just finished uh feeding my shrimp a pea i'll show you guys a little video of this right now and uh this is just like a green bean a pea a green bean and um uh they seem to really like just standard canned green bean they all seem to like it and the snails and the shrimp had turned into pretty much nothing by this morning so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching i'll give you guys updates on our new goby thanks for watching and i'll see you next time